Oi, top of the morning to you gamers, how you doing? It's me, your boy Waddles, welcome back to the Minecraft Guide, more specifically the Creeper Fire Map episode. Some said the day would never come, some doubted me, many doubted me, but no, no, of course the day would come. The day is here, finally, and, and it feels even better than it ever would have without it being today. We'll build a farm and it'll be explosive. The, the most, most explosive. explosive but welcome back everybody i hope you're all doing well today me i'm doing pretty good but i do have one gigantic problem so uh last episode we built the treehouse and you know i love the treehouse it's a nice treehouse i would live in this treehouse definitely for sure not a doubt about it but um no we didn't spend an episode building the treehouse and then i changed the plan no no what do you mean um okay I was going to build a cat-powered creeper farm, which is usually a little bit smaller, but instead I, I decided that I wanted to build a redstone creeper farm because we haven't really done very much redstone in this world, and I'd like the farm to be as productive as possible. The problem here, the redstone creeper farm is going to be a whole lot bigger. Sure, there are ways to compact it, but I don't want to. It, it's going to be big, and it would look really bad in the sky above the treehouse, so help. What do I use the treehouse for? If you have any ideas, please let me know down below. I already put a bird in it. I don't know, though. It, is it a birdhouse? I'm not sure if you have any ideas, please, please hook me up. So if the creeper farm is going to be big, so big that it can't go in the sky, where else could it go? Well, simple. I think the creeper farm could probably sit right in this area in here and it should fit pretty much perfectly. I mean, the biggest part of the creeper farm is going to be like 16 blocks out in every direction, but I think that shouldn't be a problem over here. We should be pretty isolated but not isolated to the point where the farm won't run. It'll definitely run over here. 16 blocks, that's right. This scraper farm, today's build, is going to be somewhat sizable. And now today's build is a Java edition creeper farm. It is not the only way to build a creeper farm, but it's a pretty efficient way to build one of these things. If you build this thing on bedrock edition, it, it might work. I haven't tested it, it might work, but it also might be a whole lot more tricky because mob spawning on bedrock edition can kind of be annoying, I'm, I'm sorry. 16 blocks though, the farm is gonna be pretty sizable but surprisingly it doesn't require that many materials it, that, that many it, emphasis there big time in exact amounts to build the creeper farm we'll be building today exactly how we're going to build it you'll need a 13 redstone repeaters four observers five dispensers technically you could go with the less observers and dispensers don't recommend it but you could do it or you could go with more which would up your rates in in theory at least if you do go with more though you'll need more supplies across the board we'll talk about it later you'll need nine magma blocks for this build one hopper two chests and then a minecart with a hopper in it for the item collection system for the clock that we're going to build, you're going to need a redstone torch and a couple extra pieces of redstone. Almost forgot, but you will also need eight fence gates. And non-exact amounts, here are some other things that you might want to get. A redstone torch to start the clock that we're going to set up. Some rails and powered rails for your item collection system. You won't need this many, but you'll need some. You'll also need power sources for those powered rails. Uh, trap doors. So this is the big one. You're going to need trap doors. Uh, a lot of trap doors. How many? Well, um, <laughs> nine stacks of logs, Ooh. like logs, stacks of them, times nine, that, and then turn them into trapdoors, that many trapdoors. It's a lot of trapdoors. It'll be worth it. I promise. But it's a lot. You'll also need slabs, building blocks that mobs can spawn on, and then as many water buckets as you have dispensers. So for us, five today. First, find the center of your farm. You can build this farm up in the sky, you can build it right on the ground like we're gonna do today, or you could sink it down into the ground if you wanted to. The center of your farm can really be wherever you'd like, but it should be spaced out from other things, especially if you care about aesthetics. So, the treehouse, that should be more than 16 blocks away from here, and the cathedral, definitely more than 16 blocks away from here as well. This block right here with a scaffolding on it will be our center. From the center, place a scaffolding or a building block, then another one, and then another one. These are all temporary, just so we can get up here. Now, actually, right off the bat today is redstone time. We're gonna do our redstone on iron blocks because I think it'll be cool. So place a building block down and then another one right there. Then off of both sides of these blocks, go one, two, three, four. So four right there, we'll go ahead and fill that in too. And then over here, we'll go one, two, three, four 
four, just like that. You should end up with a platform that is two blocks wide, nine blocks long. Right above the block that you started on, so this one right here for us, place another block, just like that. Now, the clock. The redstone clock is actually really, really simple. Start by placing a torch up on top of this block right here. Then, it's repeater time. So, this redstone clock is going to power the dispensers on and off in this farm. Inside of the dispensers, we'll have water. The water will basically rinse off all of the spawning platforms. It'll send the creepers down to the bottom area where we'll be taken out. But the redstone clock. We have repeaters going down this way, then we have a redstone turn, then we have repeaters going down this way, then a turn, then repeaters come back over to this block. Now, all we need to do is add a bunch of delay to every single repeater. On every repeater, you will want the maximum delay. Otherwise, this clock would be way, way, way too fast. Now, if you're into redstone, uh, you could build your redstone clock a different way, but this, this is a really simple way. It's a little expensive, but it's simple. So, there we go. There's our redstone clock. Now, all we need to do is get this thing started. So, to start it, we'll actually break that redstone dust, place it down, and then break it right away. This signal will start traveling through here. We'll put the dust back, and then boom, the clock is running that's it it's that simple so once your redstone clock looks exactly like this including the signal which is very very important it's time to move on to the next step which is the first spawning platform start with the dispenser you're gonna want to crouch place the dispenser on top of the redstone torch so it faces up so uh, in other words not like that you want it to go uh, like uh, just like that boom perfect now fun fact about this dispenser it's actually the first dispenser of this world which is a sad but true fact actually when I was crafting these dispensers i got the recipe for the first time it was kind of crazy this whole world 58 episodes first dispenser if your clock is running like it should be every once in a while you'll hear a click from the dispenser that's fine don't worry about it now it's time for the actual platform itself the platform will sit one block down lower than the dispenser so right there place one building block then two three four five six seven and then finally you're going to place an eighth one now, uh, you want to do this out of spawnable blocks, uh, so stone bricks for me, and then on the edges to make this farm look more expensive than it actually is, I'm gonna do iron. I think it's gonna be really cool. Iron is a spawnable block too, so it works out. But either way, in every single direction from this dispenser, you wanna build eight blocks out. So four, five, six, seven, eight. Eight right there, then we can go ahead and go over here and do the same thing. Finally, we can go on this side and do the same thing again. So, there we go. We have the start of our very first spawning platform. Eight blocks out in every direction from the dispenser. Now, this farm is going to end up basically being... It's going to end up being a diamond. Like, take the square, turn it sideways a little bit. Yeah, mm -hmm, it's going to be a diamond. So, now we want to fill the rest of this first floor in. To fill it in, easy, easy, easy. If all of your measurements are correct, you should have a perfect diagonal from this bit all the way over to that bit over there. So, uh, filling it in, just grabbing spawnable blocks placing them down and then working on the diagonal and check this out the measurements are on point which means the diagonal it's perfect now do it again in all of the other sides It also might be a pretty good idea to put a torch down below this farm or a couple torches just to keep spawns from happening. Definitely wouldn't want to come down below the thing and find mobs. But here we go. Spawning platform number one out of five done today. Kind of. We'll talk about it a little more in a second. So check this out. We put a water bucket inside of this dispenser. Wait for the signal to reach the dispenser and then the dispenser will dispense the water. That's how dispensers work. The water will pour all the way over to the edges of this platform because we went eight blocks. Eventually the signal comes back around and picks up the water again. When the water is dispensed right here, all of the mobs that are on this platform, so creepers, will be pushed over to the side. If they don't make it all the way off, then in the next go around, they should make it all the way off. Don't put the water bucket inside of the dispenser quite yet, though. That would be really, really annoying. So now, with one floor done, it's time to work on the next floor, actually. So, to do this, grab a building block or a scaffolding and go right on top of your dispenser. Then, grab an observer, actually. Jump up and place it facing down. After that, place the dispenser on top of the observer, just like that, facing up again. Then go ahead and jump off of all of that and remove the temporary block right there. So remember how this will work. The dispenser will drop water right on top of the dispenser eventually, once we have buckets inside of it. The observer will detect that, turn it into a redstone signal, and send it up to the next floor, meaning the next dispenser right there. Floor number two, the next platform should be even with your observer, and every single platform after that should also be even with the observers, every time. 
The same deal though. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then finally on the eighth one, because we're big rich right there, we got the iron on the edge. That's going to be just about it. That's all we need to do from every direction and then fill it in again. It's so simple and we've already done it before. So we know exactly how to do it which is really nice. Creeper farms are one of those things that seem like it would be like way more difficult to build, but is actually in reality, really easy to build. It just requires kind of a lot of materials and a little bit of a grind. Platform number two done. And now we have the ceiling in here. Now all we need is one more thing. And that final thing, that's that's a really, really expensive thing. Uh, trapdoors. We need a lot of trapdoors. Now there's no way in the world that I have enough wood for all of the trapdoors today already. But we have enough wood, probably, uh, hopefully enough trapdoors to finish the first floor at least. Check this out. It's a zombie and a creeper. You notice anything? Uh, specifically about the height? Yeah, the zombie is way, way taller than the creeper. Same with the skeleton. The skeleton is the same height as the zombie. So check this out. Right here, two blocks. For a zombie to spawn, it needs at minimum a two block tall space. For a creeper, well actually, we can make things a little bit shorter. Check this out. If we place a block and then a trapdoor right there, the creeper is still shorter than the trapdoor, which is actually kind of crazy. And then over here, if I try and place a trapdoor, it's not going to work. And that's because the zombie or a skeleton would be too tall. If we place trapdoors on the ceiling, we can stop all zombie and skeleton spawns, which is perfect because we don't want any of those in the creeper farm. Today, the creeper is the star of the show. Creepers do a lot of damage for how short they are. It's trapdoor time. Start by placing trapdoors diagonally from the observer in the center. Then go ahead on the flat sides and, and place them diagonally out as well. Unfortunately, no, we're not creating a pattern right here. All we're doing is creating room for the water to actually be able to be dispensed. If we put trapdoors right next to the spot right here, well, one, uh, the, the observers would fire the trapdoors, it would be annoying, and, and two, the water wouldn't be able to flow out of here. So no trapdoors in this spot, this spot, that spot, and that spot. Spot. Put trapdoors everywhere else. Cover the entire ceiling with trapdoors, and you will effectively eliminate all zombie and skeleton spawns from this farm. The only places where they'll be able to spawn, in fact, will be right next to the dispenser, which is a little bit of a bummer, but there's no easy way around it, so it's not that big of a deal. Now, while we finish the ceiling, though, let's talk about spider spawns, because those, those are a little bit more tricky to eliminate. If we wanted to stop spiders from spawning in the floor, we'd have to basically break the floor up with something. Because we're using water, we can't just place carpets or trapdoors down on the ground. That wouldn't work. Basically, there's no easy way to eliminate spider spawns from this creeper farm, and that's a bummer. But at the same time, it's not the end of the world. It's not that big of a deal. We can just deal with it, let the spiders spawn in here, they'll be rinsed out of this farm and taken care of at the bottom, and we'll actually, we'll actually get a little bit of string from this farm, which is kind of nice, because we don't have a single string farm in this world. This is basically the first uh, super expensive string farm of the world if you want to think about it like that. Not very efficient for string though. All right, so yes, thankfully, I do have enough trapdoors to finish floor number one. Floor number one, the floor, the, the ceiling, the trapdoors, the dispenser, everything is finished, which means it's time for the next layer and then all of the layers after that. So up here, this is what we have. We have something that looks exactly like the lower floor a second ago. Then uh, what we're gonna do is add another floor. So temporary block right there. Then we have an observer. And then on top of the observer, again, we have a dispenser. Then temporary block, observer, dispenser. Then finally, temporary block, observer, dispenser, boom. That's it. That's going to do it for today. Now we can go ahead and get rid of all these temporary blocks. So today, our creeper farm, it'll end up having five different layers. It'll be pretty tall. If you wanted to, you could do less or you could do more. If you were going to do less or more, all you would do is stop sooner or continue farther. Five floors should be pretty good though. The minimum I would do ever would be three floors. The steps for each floor are identical. Every single floor, eight blocks out from the center, then fill it all in. After that, place trap doors on the ceiling after you get the next floor in. And then uh, observer dispenser, you know, that whole tower in the middle. Yep, everything is identical over and over and over again. Which is the perfect opportunity for me to get some work done. I think off camera, all that I need to do now is, well, <laughs> well, it, it's a lot. I'm, I'm going to start the next floor right here and then the next floor right there. And then finally the next floor right there. Build out, fill it in, get a bunch of trap doors. And yeah, it's a, it's a lot of work, but I will be back once all of that work is done and once our farm is a whole lot closer to being a working creeper farm. <clears throat> Wait, what? 
Wait, what was that? It's me again, and there's a time lapse, and, and it's moving quick? Yup, that's right. I figured today's episode was finally the perfect episode for a time lapse talk. Oh my gosh, it's been like forever since we've done one of these, but we're back. Today, I figured I would talk about, well, well, it's like the end of 2020, so I figured I would talk about 2020, but uh, more specifically, some of my favorite things of 2020, because, because, uh, well, uh, clearly, the year has been crazy. It's been an absurd year, but there have been some things literally carrying me through the year, and I thought today it would be fun to talk about those things a little bit. We have to start with food. Food is the big, big fuel. fuel. Earlier in 2020, I had this crazy routine, like once quarantine had started, of having a salad every single day at lunchtime i don't know what it is but salads for the longest time they were just genuinely like making me happy and don't get me wrong salads and i were still good friends i don't have them as much i definitely should have them more but elites lately the, the game, game it's been changed it's all about those acai bowls they they're so amazing. If you're starting to make videos out there, highly, highly, absolutely recommend like a good on point meal before you record. It seriously clears my headspace up a huge time and helps me make good videos. But, but speaking of headspace, headspace, headspace has been the biggest savior in 2020. It sounds like a sponsorship, but no, no, it's not. Headspace is an app. It's got like meditation and more importantly for me, like sleep things. So I am terrible at falling asleep like minecraft build i i've got it down crazy farm it's simple but fall asleep too too complex but headspace has been my savior over the last few months i've been crazy crazy obsessed with those nighttime story time things if you use headspace you know what i'm talking about they're, they're kind of creepy sounding at first but yeah they're like soothing too those nighttime talk things have been my brand new routine i mean that and the old-fashioned youtube both of them but really headspace especially to fall asleep i can't talk about things that i liked in 2020 though without talking about music because seriously music it's all about music music is like my biggest most favorite thing ever maybe i i don't know so i got my spotify wrapped a couple weeks ago and i was shocked so for a couple years in a row yeah right by joji was like my number one song and like by far like it wasn't even close but then this year Mac Miller circles it took over the whole top five I'm serious every single one of my top five songs in 2020 was from circles such an amazing album and I even got it on vinyl like after the fact I haven't listened to it on vinyl yet but it looks nice it's one of those clear vinyls mm. It's on point. It's really nice. I'm thinking about framing that one. In fact, I'll try my hardest the, the day that I drop this video to go in fleet and put on my Instagram story uh, highlights from from my 2020 wrapped. But I guess I didn't realize it at, at all until, until wrapped. But Mac Miller Circles has been on repeat in every single one of my playlists the entire year. And so many songs from it, they're so good. But if I have to pick a favorite one, like a single one, it's got to be Good News, Blue World, or Right. And uh, finally, I figured four things was, was enough. Pets. My pets have been adorable this year. So, as you know, maybe, as you don't, I, I got Felix, and I, I mean, I think it was like June. Maybe it was like June at this point. Then, actually a little before that, I got Franklin, and, and now I have a Cash as well. And all three of them, they're so adorable. They all get along. They all have really different personalities. Lately, I'm pretty sure Franklin, my, my first cat, thinks he's Indiana Jones, and then Felix is just like, he's just like this big baby. That's the best way to put it. And then Cash, Cash just talks like 24 seven. The dynamic is amazing. The personalities, if they call them that, they're amazing and they always cheer me up every day good talk good talk but uh take a look at that i think the creeper farm is coming along pretty nicely we should probably jump back into the world now see the treehouse has at least one use i mean we could use the treehouse to to look at the creeper farm it looks pretty good from here all built out of wire no lie no lie so all of the spawning platforms for today at least are finished number one number two three and then four and then finally five right here five is the last one for today now on the top of the fifth layer i never mentioned but you want to put a ceiling on it whenever you're done with these layers don't put any more observers in the center do the same thing with the trap doors and all but just put a normal block which is exactly what i did so there we go all of these layers they're finished and then i went ahead and put water buckets in all of these dispensers now it's time to set up the actual roof because up here 
This, this isn't the final roof. To start, we need to find the center, which is going to be this block right here. Then we'll go ahead and put that back and put the stone cutter right there so we can remember it. So we have the whole spawning platforms in, the rinsing thing, everything like that, and it's good. But why isn't it working? Well, that's pretty straightforward, actually. It's way too bright in here. For mobs to spawn, creepers, it needs to be darker than this for sure. So, how do we fix that? Well, it's actually quite simple. You really have two options here. Option number one is a whole lot more expensive, but might end up looking more cool. The first option is to build some sort of shell around this thing. Like, it could be like a circular thing or something. I would recommend leaving at least two blocks from all of these edges, though, like two blocks of space. But, yeah, that could work, and you would fully build it in, fill in the top, everything like that. Then you'd have a really dark room in here. Or you can do option number two the option that we're gonna do which is definitely a whole lot cheaper to do this one all you need is slabs this is where the slabs come in so the center is right there this is going to be one then two three four five six seven eight but then we're gonna keep going so nine uh, ten eleven twelve thirteen 14 15 and 16 and that right there is where we're gonna stop so that's 16 blocks out from the center if you want to count the center that's gonna be 17 blocks out that way and then right here the same exact thing we want 16 blocks out from the center counting the center 17 we're gonna do that on every single side so remember how we started this thing with the clock and it was nine blocks long well here's another platform that needs to be nine blocks long so one two three uh four and then we have five right there six seven eight nine four blocks out from the center on either side on every single side then it's actually pretty simple once you do that whole nine block thing if all of your measurements are correct you should be able to create a perfect diagonal again and everything should link up so here's the moment of truth did i do it right i i really hope i did but i always doubt myself when it comes to counting and, and measuring and making sure everything is perfect also you definitely don't fall off of this thing if you're high up in the air uh, which I definitely am, but look at that, perfect. That side is exactly how we needed it to be. Now, all that I need to do is uh, do that again over here. So link that side up, link the other side up, link the other side up. And then after I've linked everything up, I'm going to come back and fill in the center everywhere with the bottom half slabs. This is very, very important. We're using slabs on this thing because we don't want mobs to spawn on top of the farm and they do the job in half the amount of blocks. So next up, go ahead and fill that top platform in or build some sort of box around your farm. Now, when you're doing this step, it's going to get dark down below this platform. Very, very dark. So if you haven't yet, definitely jump back down to the surface and light things up. Because otherwise, if you've already lit up like a bunch of caves in this area, then mobs will start spawning like possibly crazy down on the ground below this thing. So definitely make sure you've lit up the surface. And finally, because I haven't actually put any sort of mob funneling thing down below this thing, I'm going to come back in and remove all of these water buckets for now. I definitely don't want creepers getting pushed off of this thing, sent down onto the ground while I'm trying to work on things down below. I mean, it's finished the top platform or set up the area down underneath this farm first, whichever one you'd like to do. Top platform, done. And actually, in my case, area down below the farm, pretty much done too. I didn't finish the blocks. So the goal is to funnel all of the creepers to the middle. We funnel the creepers to the middle of the farm so it's easier to take them out in one singular spot and pick up all of the drops. How do we do that? Easy, easy. Water funnel. But setting up the water funnel, it can be a little bit tricky. You're going to need the perfect shape. So, to set up the perfect shape, start by finding the pointy sides of your creeper farm. So, like this block right here. Then go one, two, three. On that third block, build straight down to the ground. So, that's going to end up right here. Then, from this block right here, you're going to go one, two, one, two. So, you have a flat section of five. Then, we're going to go diagonally in. Next, we have a flat section of three, just like that. Then after that, we have a weird L, just like that. Then another weird L. Then another section of three right there. And then finally, we're on the next flat side, which is going to be five blocks long again. So build that shape all the way around this farm. Then you're going to want to come back in with some extra blocks. Place an extra block on the edge of this flat five side right there. And then right here next to it on the start of the three side. Then another block in right there in between those blocks. You're going to do that on all of the flat five alongside corners. So you end up with something that looks similar to my farm minus the water. Next, find the center of your farm. The center block should be right below this stuff right there. You need the floor of this farm to be at least three blocks below the floor of your redstone clock. If it's not at least three blocks, the creepers won't fit find the center so for me the center was right there from this block you're going to dig out three blocks down in the ground so like one 
two, three, and then over here, one, two, three, other side, one, two, three, other side, one, two, three. Dig all of that out except for the corners right in here. The corners are here. So basically, we end up with a really, really terrible circle. In the center, I went ahead and put a three by three of magma blocks. If you had more magma blocks, which I, I do, but it's not really necessary, you could put more magma blocks in here on the floor. Again, not necessary though. Finally, before you put any water in, put fence gates on top of every single magma block except for the middle one. You can skip the middle one. After you set up that outline, dig everything up, place the extra blocks, it's water source time. Where do the water sources go on this funnel? So, my water sources are right here and here on top of those two blocks. Then I have one in this corner, another one in this corner, another one in this corner, and then again on top of the two blocks. So basically, water sources on all of the raised up blocks, and then the corners, but only the corner blocks. Once you place all of your water in, everything should flow towards the center. No water sources needed in the middle. Because of those dips down, the water just flows down. Everything should be pushed right to the center, which is perfect. So if you can get that far, then it's time to go down below the magma blocks and set up a collection system. Here's what I came up with. You want a hopper minecart running continuously underneath all of the magma blocks. To create that, I actually had to go past the magma blocks a little bit, just like that right here. Right here, I placed a hopper, made sure the hopper was empowered, and ran it into a chest, a double chest actually. This is where all of the gunpowder will go. There might be a couple different ways to run the rail line, but I figured this was probably the best shape right here. Powered rail on either end, then a little squiggle in there, and then a flat side right across by the hopper. Now, our access for the farm for the drops is gonna be kinda lame today. We're gonna leave it right there. It's basically a hallway by the cathedral cutting off of it. My plan is to eventually make that pretty sweet, like make like a nice tunnel walking over to it, but for now, that's fine. Now also, another thing that I'm probably gonna leave alone today, the grass under here. The grass is definitely not ideal. I, I don't like it at all, but it's, it's fine. It, it does work. Down here though, I put cobblestone. Eventually, I'd love to come back in here with maybe a bunch of smooth stone. Like that stuff looks really good and put it in here. Maybe normal stone or maybe even stone bricks. I'm not too sure. Doesn't matter too much. Today, the farm works, and that's all that really matters. So, because I did it off camera, I'll give you guys another good look at the circle. This is what I've created in here. Again, remember, the center area, it's one block lower. In the center, three by three, we have magma blocks. Then we have some lower blocks around it. No extra water sources over there. All of the water sources are over here along the outer ring. And the outer ring, it goes five, three, weird L, weird L, three, five. All the way around. Also, remember, 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 light up the ground underneath this farm. If you don't light it up, like over here, you could get other mob spawns, which could be bad. You can actually place a lantern or a torch right here, and it'll be fine. The light level won't travel up too much and affect your farm too much. And so, for the creeper farm, that is actually going to be just about it. Look at the thing. We can see it from over here, which is really, really cool. But, let's talk about rates really quick, because rates... Uh, those are probably going to be a problem right now. We need to do caving down under the ground underneath this farm because there, I guarantee it, are like a bunch of caves that I have never checked out that are dark. Like, I mean, this one, it goes somewhere like that way. I haven't lit it up quite yet. If your creeper farm rates are bad, it's definitely 100% because you have hostile mobs idling around somewhere else. If you want amazing rates with this farm, you have two options. Go into the sky like 120 blocks above the farm in AFK directly above it or do a bunch of caving light up the surface around your farm and then it will work beautifully always unfortunately today i don't think we're going to have those beautiful rates we're gonna have to put in a little bit more of a grind to get this thing going but it is definitely functional it will work. Hostile mobs will spawn in there. Also, remember that if you're building this thing in your world and you're going to AFK overnight, the surface, the surface is definitely a spawnable area. Light that up just like you're lighting the caves up. Or again, like I said, go like 120 blocks above the center of the farm, make a platform, stand in that platform, AFK, the rate should be a whole lot better. You go up that high to cut out all of the other spawnable spaces down on the ground or under the ground. It's time for the comment of the day. I think you should do a lot of exploring one day and try and get the achievement to all of the biomes. That would be cool. Yeah, so now that we have a creeper farm actually set up, all we need to do is improve the rates of the thing by lighting everything up and then exploring for sure. Now that we'll have access to pretty much 
to infinite rockets uh we might need a better paper farm but now that we have access to like a bunch of rockets we can actually explore and fly a lot which is something that i'm really really excited for but elites i think that is where we're going to end this episode next episode we might work on the creeper farm a little bit more indirectly at least the whole improving the rates bit but for now that's it if you enjoyed the video leave a like subscribe if you haven't yet thank you all so much for watching huge shout out to my patrons sci fireman and reitman today thank you so much for the support until next time stay cool i'll see you in the next episode creeper farm forever